Hi, and welcome to the start of a new series called I Know How You Feel. And I'm really excited about this series in which we're going to talk about our emotions. Now, our emotions are something from the moment we wake up to the moment we lay down. Our emotions are so dominant, right? So sometimes you can wake up angry and frustrated and you take that with you for the rest of the day. And sometimes you can even fall asleep happy and wake up depressed, right? Or you can wake up happy and then end the day depressed. So it's our emotions dominate us so often. And especially in our society, emotions are almost king in some aspects. So what we're going to talk about, we're going to look at emotions from a biblical perspective. What does the Bible have to say about our emotions? So I know how you feel. It's a series about our emotions. And I'm really excited about it. And that's one of my emotions, <laughs> I'm really excited about it. Um, so to start off, I think we're gonna start off first with God has emotions, right? God has emotions. Throughout all of scripture, we see that God has emotions. He's, he's happy, he's sad, he's frustrated, he's angry. He, he has all these emotions, right? And West, this is most evidently seen and the person of Jesus. Jesus, who is God, expresses all the human emotions. So Jesus wept when Lazarus died. Jesus wept sadness at the death of his friend. Jesus loved. So John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, Jesus says. So Jesus comes in love. He, he loves everyone. And that's, he see that in his life. And he loves his disciples. He loves Mary. He loves um, all the poor and the needy he meets. He loves these people all equally. Jesus has compassion, right? So when Jesus is coming up to the town of Jerusalem, he's like, he has this, this weeping moment of compassion towards people who have, who have lost their way, who have lost the shepherd. And he has this compassion for the lost. And Jesus has joy, right? Jesus has joy and excitement. He says, my, I, I want a, your joy to be part of my joy, or I want my joy to share into you, right? And then Jesus had frustration and anger. If you remember in the temple, Jesus makes a, a whip and he knocks down all the, the money taxers in, 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 in the temple because they're raising uh, money unfairly taxing the poor. Jesus comes there in anger and frustration into the temple. So we see all of these emotions in Jesus. Joy, happiness, frustration, sadness, weeping, all of that. But this is evident also of Jesus in the Old, or God in the Old Testament, excuse me. I mean, God within the Old Testament, you see all the gamut of emotions. So this takes us to the next point that emotions are natural. I think many of us would know this. As I said, we wake up and we go to bed in some emotional state. Now, I know sometimes when my wife asks me how I feel, I'm just like, I'm okay. But usually I'm feeling something. <laughs> I'm feeling something. But we all have some sort of emotion just kind of just kind of going through us all the time. So emotions are natural. They're natural to us. And this is most, um, we see this in Psalm 70. Psalm 70. And it says, hasten, O God, to save me. Come quickly, Lord, to help me. May those who want to take my life be put to shame and confusion. May all who desire my ruin be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, ha ha, turn back because of their shame. But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help always say the Lord is great. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O oh God. You are my help and my deliverer. Lord, do not delay. So in this psalm, one thing I love about the psalms is that they really express, again, all the emotional gamut. Everything. So in this psalm, you have gladness, you have rejoicing, you have the frustration towards your angers who are mocking you, you have distress, where you have, come quickly, I'm poor and needy, I need help. Right? So what I love about this is that when we have our emotions, we can come to God with them. We can come to God with our emotions. And I know that a lot of us have the dinner prayer, right? 
or, or that bedtime prayer where it's where we kind of real stoic and, and we have it all written out and, and 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 this is a good starting point right but we don't want to end here where we we just kind of say lord i want to thank you for all that you've done in my life amen you know, you know those 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 really kind of emotionless prayer right and we don't talk to anyone that way right and God knows how we're really feeling. He, he probably listens to that, like, okay, that's a start. But we gotta come more vulnerable and more honest, right? You can imagine David is probably praying this prayer, just crying out and, and, and just and just really speaking to the Lord in this in this real raw state, right? Because God can handle our rawness. God's not surprised. God's not like, what are you saying? He, he can handle our rawness. We come to him vulnerably. Right? Because if we hide our emotions, that there's, there's a sense in where we're not being completely honest to God. And we, and we come to the Lord in prayer, but we're not really there with our emotions. We're not, we're not fully invested. We're not fully seeking him, right? That we're holding something back. So what we're... What David is doing, he's coming to the Lord with all of his emotions. So emotions are natural, which means emotions ought to be part of our prayers and part of our relationship with God. Just a natural part of it, right? I mean, there's there should be certain days where you're like, Lord, I'm just, I, I, I'm just feeling really fearful. I'm really, I'm really stressed right now. Or on the other side, Lord, I'm so happy for all your blessings. Lord, thank you so much for all you've done in my life. Right? You can say those prayers that quickly in the emotion, thanking the Lord. Right? So what this also leads to is that our emotions are natural. Right? So God has emotions, and which means that God who created us means that we have emotions that are just natural to what it means to be human. But also... Emotions must not control us. And this is huge because this is something that's really big in our society. Have you ever heard the term or, or the term or sorry, the phrase where people say, do whatever makes you happy, right? I'm sure we have all heard that phrase. Do whatever makes you happy. I don't care what they do. They can do whatever makes them happy. Whatever makes them happy. Whatever makes them happy. It's repeated day after day after day. And what this really is when I say emotions do not control us, we don't want to make our emotions an idol. And what an idol is, is anything that replaces God as the most important in our life. So in other words, when you say, whatever makes me happy, we've placed happiness as the idol. Happiness is what we live for. We're not living for God. We're not living for each other. We're living for happiness. Whatever makes me happy is the idol, right? And that dominates our society. So it's like, I don't care, I don't think about the consequences, I don't think if it's good, I don't think if I should do it, I'm just going to do it because it makes me happy. Or in the flip side, if you're always angry and frustrated, you just think that's, that's who I am, I'm just an angry person. And you allow anger or frustration to just control you and dominate you. And you put anger and frustration up as an idol, and it dominates someone's life, right? So we see whatever makes you happy or we allow anger, we allow these things to dominate us. And we don't allow um, the Lord to be the one in control. Because whenever you say, I do whatever makes me happy, what we're not doing, we're not thinking, we're not giving discernment or wisdom, we're not asking the question, should I do it? Right? We're just saying, oh, I'll just do it because it makes me happy. But should you? Because to be honest, everything that makes you happy is not things that you should do, right? Just because it makes you happy doesn't mean that you should do it. Now, we, again, going back to the Psalms, going back to David, Psalms 86, verses 1 through 9. Again, we hear the rawness of David. Hear me, Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am faithful to you. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Have mercy on me, Lord. For I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, Lord, for I have put my trust in you. You, Lord, are forgiving and good, abounding in love to all who call to you. 
Hear my prayer, Lord. Listen to my cry for mercy. When I am in distress, I call to you because you answer me. So here David is in an emotional state. He says, I am in distress, right? He's in distress. He says, I'm feeling poor and needy, which is another way to say, I'm in distress. I need help. Also, you could also say he's fearful. He has fear. And I would say fear is the most natural human emotion. Because, right, the moment we are born, we come out and screaming, right? And I think that's out of fear, out of what is going on to me. Like a baby is fearful. It's a reason for the screaming. So David is at his, at his basic, most basic human emotion of fear. And I think a lot of times we don't realize how much fear dominates what we do and what we don't do. So David comes in here and he says, Lord, I'm in distress. I'm in fear. And David said he's not allowing the fear or the distress to control him. What does he do? He comes before the Lord. And he says, I am poor and I'm in distress. I come before the Lord, right? So what a lot of times our emotions do, we, we don't think, right? We just act out of our emotions. And then we think later after something that we did that we shouldn't have done, right? Then we think about it. We're like, whoa, I shouldn't have done that, which made me happy, right? I maybe shouldn't have done that. So what, what David is doing is like, I mean, I'm in distress. I'm fearful. But I know, right? I know the Lord, right, can change me. Look, he says, bring joy to your servant. So he knows, there's, there's, he's like, listen, I'm in distress, I'm fearful, but I know the Lord can bring me joy, right? He doesn't just run off in his, in his distress and fear. He's like, listen, I need to stop and think the Lord. Also, when he's called to distress, he says, I call to you because you answer me. What this also means is that he knows the Lord brings comfort and peace in his distress. He knows, right? This is why it's really important when it comes to our emotional state, we must stop and think and use wisdom and discernment. Now, this isn't to say that our emotions are bad. Not at all. I like to think of it as a circle, right? So if we're feeling distressed and, and, and fearful, we need to think, why am I feeling this way, right? So you have the heart and you have the mind. And you ask yourself, why am I feeling this way? So I'm fearful, I'm afraid, but why? What's causing it? That's what's causing it. And it changes you. See, changes you, bringing joy. Let me come before the Lord. Same with happiness. What, why am I so happy right now? Oh, I'm with my friends and family. That must be important. Why am I so happy right now? Oh, because I'm doing something that brings me joy. Maybe this is my gift, right? Think, why, am I, why is this making me happy? Is this good? Is this something I should do, right? Is this a calling of the Lord, right? Is this something that's making me happy? Or for an anger or frustrated, what's the anger or frustration? What's causing it? Our emotions are natural, and we must use them as a tool to understanding ourselves more fully. And also understanding ourselves, when we come before the Lord, we can be honest and vulnerable to Him and expressing how we really feel so that we can receive the joy, the comfort, and the peace that comes from God. So again, just, just in summary, our emotions are natural. God had emotions. He has emotions. And they're natural to us. But we must not allow our emotions to control us. Our emotions are not king. Whatever makes you happy isn't always what you should do. Right? But we need to think. Whatever we're feeling, why am I feeling this way? Give understanding and wisdom and discernment to your emotions. Do not let them dominate you. So I'm really looking forward to the rest of the emotions that we will talk about in this series. And this is going to be the undergirding thing. Emotions must not control us. But emotions are good. And I really am excited to jump into them and learn about emotions from a biblical perspective. But always remember this. That emotion, emotions must not control us but use our emotions to make good informed decisions. And the best decision you can make is going before the Lord in an honest emotional state. I pray and I hope this video is a strength and encouragement for your faith.